From Steam tier to Stargate, energy is the foundation of your base in GregTech New Horizons. With so many different methods and tiers, you might be wondering, what are my options, and how many tiers will they last me? Today's video seeks to give a rundown on some popular methods of energy generation and how they change and perform through the 13 tiers in GTNH. Unlike my tutorial videos, this video is more of a meta breakdown, providing multiple popular methods of power gen for you to choose from, based on my expertly provisioned vibes and very questionable research. Keep in mind that while some power gen methods may be unlocked earlier than I recommend them, the goal is to inform when each method is the most relevant. All that said, let's begin. In Steam Age, you've got some options. For example, Steam, Steam, and even Steam. Steam is produced in three main ways. The first is using GregTech solar boilers, which take sunlight and water and output steam. The second is a GregTech or Railcraft solid fuel boiler, which burns fuels like charcoal, coal coke, and even diamond dust to turn water into steam. The third option, and one of my favorites, is using a Railcraft creosote boiler. In GTNH, coke ovens are the main source of charcoal, and as a byproduct, they create tons of excess creosote oil, making this a fantastic place to use it. Steam is the direct currency for all steam machines, so no conversions need to be made. In LV, you gain access to GregTech steam turbines, which consume steam and output 1 amp of LV each. These are a great way to transition, but don't scale very well as steam has pitifully low energy density. By MV, you will probably benefit from moving on to a new source of power gen. Also in LV, you can start oil processing. Oil-based power is known for its quick and energy-dense nature, requiring little infrastructure to set up and giving great energy returns. Unfortunately, oil will not be 100% renewable until oil-based power is no longer relevant, so it's best suited for experienced or knowledgeable players that like to progress quickly. The most popular oil-based fuel is light fuel, which can be distilled and desulfurized from oil you collect from spouts around the world. These fuels can be converted into energy through the use of GT single block combustion generators, which burn combustible fluids to output an amp of relevant power. Light fuel is the beginning of a long line of oil-based combustibles that can last you through mid-game. Light fuel translates directly into diesel, which is crafted in an MV mixer. In HV, diesel gets an upgrade to cetane boosted diesel, which is as simple as adding various acids in the form of tetranitromethane. From EV to LUV, cetane boosted diesel can continue to scale well, but can be optionally upgraded to high octane gasoline using existing oil infrastructure. LUV introduces an interesting shakeup to oil based fuels in the form of the UCFE, or Universal Chemical Fuel Engine. This generator requires a steady and measured supply of combustion promoter, a substance that combines liquid oxygen and other additives to keep the generator from voiding your energy. The UCFE is by far the best place to burn purple rocket fuel, which is a slightly off-meta power generation method that requires heavy chem plant investment. Purple rocket fuel can last you well into UV and is much more effective than HOG, which begins to fall off around LUV. Another powerful fuel that lasts through mid-game is the famous benzene, which is unlocked with your first pyrolyze oven in MV. A pyrolyze oven uses wood to create wood tar, which can be distilled into benzene and other byproducts. Because wood is easy to source renewably, benzene fills the niche of heavy investment but severely unshakable power gen. Benzene is easily the most popular route for power and has a ton of documentation on how to do it correctly. I recommend this to first-time players for its consistent nature. Benzene remains strong until IV when players unlock nitrobenzene, which is a mix of nitric acid, sulfuric acid, distilled water, and benzene. Nitrobenzene is much more energy dense than regular benzene, and if scaled appropriately with the right turbines, can last well into UV and possibly beyond. EV unlocks a new and exciting style of power generation in the form of nuclear reactors. Vacuum nukes are the most popular variant of nuclear, which require a steady supply of coolant cells to be cycled through vacuum freezers, hence the name. They can be quite touchy, capable of removing your base from the map if they overheat, so take many backups. You will need a steady supply of uranium, which can be easily and renewably sourced through a farming a stabiloid construct mob in an extreme entity crusher, and processing its drops for titanium and uranium-238. 
In IV, MOX vac nukes are unlocked, allowing for greater power gen at the startup cost of some plutonium in addition to the uranium. These come with the same volatility problems as previously mentioned, but in return, the power gains are quite dialed. These will last you until ZPM and possibly beyond. In ZPM, you unlock the final tier of vac nukes. Reactors can now be fitted with the core, which can further increase your power yields as long as you can source Tiberium reliably. This can last until around UHV with decent scaling. When you unlock your first fusion reactor and begin ZPM, you may notice that you can use the plasmas you create to generate energy. Helium plasma is the most abundant energy plasma, which can either be put directly in plasma turbines or converted into superheated steam and sent through steam turbines. Be warned that while producing plasma is quite simple, both of these methods require a ton of turbine spam in order to keep up with mid-game power demands. As you progress, you can try tin or americium plasma in Mark II and Mark III reactors respectively, and if you feel bold enough, you can even try to conquer the Great Plasma Chain for Celestial Tungsten Plasma. Plasma can last you from ZPM to UEV and possibly beyond, having only one true competitor in its tiers. Meet Knack Fuel. This science fiction liquid uses Naquata and other hard-to-source additives to create massively dense fuels that can be burned in large Naquata reactors. NAC fuel has six different tiers, starting with Mark 1 and 2 being craftable in ZPM and UV respectively. UHV is where NAC fuel starts to shine, with Mark 3 and beyond requiring Naquata refineries, a fusion-like multi-block tailored for fuel making. While NAC fuel Mark 1 and 2 are insular, Mark 3 and beyond are recursive, requiring NAC 3 and additives to make NAC 4, and so on. I would recommend moving to NAC 4 in UEV, where its reward to investment ratio becomes the highest. This continues to scale well into UMV, where you can use spent fuel to transition to antimatter power production, a brand new power gen method added in 2.7. NAC fuel is incredibly strong both practically and theoretically, but can be extremely inconsistent due to the wide swath of resources and processing required to produce it. Make sure to keep those space elevator mining modules active. Dyson Swarm modules are basically glorified solar panels. They require UIV components and UMV Pico circuits, making them quite expensive to craft. In return, however, when set up in the correct dimension and provided with quantum computation, cryothium coolant, and a steady supply of Dyson Swarm drones, they will produce 337 billion EU per tick each. Dysons are almost the opposite of NAC fuel, being rock solid and dependable, requiring minuscule upkeep, but at the cost of high upfront investment. Unfortunately, the only way to scale Dysons is just to make more of them. And with exponentially increasing power demands, Dysons unfortunately will only last you until late UMV, after which you will need thousands to keep up. The pinnacle of all power gen added in 2.7, antimatter blows all other energy generation methods out of the water. While accessible as early as UIV, antimatter requires an exorbitant amount of exotic materials such as depleted Naquata fuel, liquid superconductors, molten magnetohydrodynamically constrained star matter, and much more to get running. For this reason, antimatter is only sanely used after getting Godforge in UMV. Antimatter power gen is comprised of two different multi-blocks, the semi-stable antimatter stabilization sequencer, also known as the SAS, and the shielded Lagrangian annihilation matrix, also referred to as the SLAM. The SAS requires you to equally distribute millions of antimatter per second to each of its input hatches along with a steady supply of catalyst liquids in order to generate additional antimatter. Antimatter can be provided to the SLAM to generate exorbitant amounts of power in huge bursts, more than any other single multi-block in the game. It is documented that each SSAS can produce enough antimatter to provide around 650 trillion EU per tick by Stargate. While a heavy investment requiring extremely complex automation and exotic materials, antimatter is undoubtedly the most powerful and interesting power generation method in Endgame, matched only by one. The Eye of Harmony is the final Gregtech multi-block you will get in your run. 
This multi will produce a wide swath of resources from a simulated condensed solar system with a recipe success chance based on the planet, multi-block casings, and other considerations. When an Eye of Harmony craft fails to generate items, energy is returned to the network, sometimes more energy than is used. This is where the Power Eye of Harmony comes in. Specifically designed to fail and return as much energy as possible, each Power Eye of Harmony can generate almost 13 trillion EU per tick per eye when fully maxed out. While this amount of energy might seem like a lot, Eye of Harmony power actually requires a ton of spam, with some Stargate bases reaching as many as 128 Power Eyes of Harmony. The trade-off for this is that PEOHs are incredibly simple logistically, and just require time and resources to set up. From the humble beginnings of Steam to the power of a condensed universe, power generation in Greg Tech New Horizons is vast in scope and complexity. I hope that this look into Endgame hasn't scared you, but instead filled you with a determination to continue and explore what GTNH has to offer. My name is Nine, and as always, I implore you to be kind to yourself and others. Peace.